What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Fix Fights podcast with Kurt and Ben. Today, we are lucky enough to be joined by Julius and Gliscus, who is going to be fighting this week on Bellator's 257 card. Julius, thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm doing great. Just uh, excited for the Friday. Can't wait for it to be over already. Just <laughs> just waiting. <laughs> That's the are, worst are part, you right? Uh... Yeah, are are you like a think about food during your weight cut type of guy, or do you like gotta keep it completely out of the way? Uh, as right now, I'm still good. Wednesday, it's gonna be pretty bad. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's still a little far away from the actual cut, so I'm eating a little bit here and there. Uh, not too much carbs, but no carbs. Yes, that was getting to me. <laughs> but the, right now, I had some snacks. I feel fine. I feel good. Uh, Wednesday is gonna suck. That's for sure. And they got you, uh, so they got you, you're at Mohegan Sun currently, right? You're up in my neck of the woods. I'm actually from, uh, from Connecticut. It's kind of crazy that Bellator is doing all their, uh, all their shows up in Connecticut and I can't even go, but, uh, I mean, I'm sure they got you in a nice room. How's the quarantine life over there? It's fine. Uh, they flew us in late last night, so we would not have to spend a lot of time yesterday. And this morning we just did a first COVID test and then... Went back to the room and now we're just hanging out all day. Um, they should know the test tomorrow or l- late tonight. So, and yeah, after tomorrow morning, we can go places, but by mean places only to work out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, yeah we, can, we can't go like um, to the casino part and hang out too much. They're going to stop you and they're going to be like, hey, what are you doing? Like, you going to work out? Or yeah, right. right. <laughs> it's crazy. It's funny. But it's it's uh, good. It's it's not bad. I, I kind of like it in the way that the way they structure the, the meetings and the workout areas. It's not before in my first Bellator fight, we had a meeting and everybody went in the same room. Then we had weigh-ins. Everybody went in the same room. Right now, it's just kind of you don't even see people too much. In my last fight, I came in to weigh in. I came in one of the we have our own little warm-up areas and little workout areas so i just went there and they were like ah julius you're one of the first people who are here um yeah i'll just come and grab you when it's time for you to weigh in so it's simple you're not wandering around they just get you if they need something so i kind of like it how like simple it became nice yeah man it's it's kind of like you're like just along for the ride it sounds yeah like they take all that choice out of it right um so, you know, we obviously want to talk a lot about this upcoming fight, um, but I kind of want to go back a little bit and just kind of like get to know you, like your background in martial arts and kind of just generally what brought you to MMA. Because I think, you know, as if you keep winning, assuming you keep winning, you're going to get more and more fans with eyes on you that kind of want to know a little bit more about who you are. Yeah, so I started, I think, just... Just like most people, everybody wrestled. Well, most people wrestled. And after college, I just wasn't sure what else I would do. Like, I love wrestling, but I hated it. But once it's over, like all the matches, all the excitement, like you just kind of create your own excitement and happiness with all these competitions and experiences. And even though sometimes you hate it, it's, it's something you would miss. You, you can't live without it. So I just knew, okay, I've been wrestling. I did some karate uh, back in the day. Um, and I just knew I'm going to need to do something. I can't just live without competing. I can't live without that excitement and being on the spotlight a little bit. So I was like, okay, fighting is that new step. Wrestling, okay, most people do it. But fighting is that like something a little bit more extreme. So I just kind of wanted to test myself a little bit. And at the same time, I just want to 
find out what I'm made of. It's not just like, oh, I'm going to go fight. And it's like, no, I'm actually curious. Like, can I do this? Can I fight? Can I defend myself? Can I, how am I going to act in weird situations? So I think, yeah, I just needed to like prove it to myself. Can I do it? Is there a moment in time where like you answered that question? Like, obviously I can do this. Uh, yes, I answered that question, but I feel if I would stop, then that question would come back. Uh -huh. So I feel it needs to just like, I need to stay in it to continue to like answer that question and put some kind of like worth on me. Mm -hmm. Like in I need to like, right? yeah, I need to like keep yeah. trying, keep fighting, just like prove to myself that I still got it because I feel if I would stop, then it's all over. Like people, people call me a fighter, but like as right now, I still don't consider myself as a fighter. I feel I still need to get like quite a few more fights to like consider myself as a fighter because I'm looking at all these legends with like so such a big records and they've been fighting for like 15 years or so and I'm like damn like those those guys been through a lot while me I'm still young in this, so it's like I can't consider myself something that I don't truly believe I am yet so maybe it's just more respect towards the the legends that I put so I don't know um, I think maybe after like maybe seven more fights I'll be like okay I'm, I'm a legit fighter now so that's a, that's a good mindset to have right always hungry always uh, always looking forward never being content yeah just can't be happy with what I got because same thing with like technique and just training like like oh I performed good in my last fight I'll perform the same in the next one I don't have to train now because of how I perform. No, you perform that way because of all the training you did. So you just gotta keep doing, don't stop. And um, yeah, just never be happy with, with what you got. So uh, where did you wrestle? I wrestled at two different places. I wrestled in upstate New York at college at Brockport. Okay. And uh, then I transferred to St. Louis at Missouri Baptist. Nice. I finished my years there with wrestling but finished my um, master's at Lindenwood, which is um, not too far from Missouri Baptist. And, I mean, I, um, I was going to say, I think I, I'm probably a little biased because, you know, I wrestled throughout high school and after. So, I, you know, for me personally, I think wrestling is definitely the best base for, for MMA, right? It also, you know, it, it just, it builds your toughness, it builds your discipline and then jumping over to MMA, you just already have such a great base. So, Obviously, I love always talking to uh, wrestlers and getting their different uh, takes on how it helped them in their careers, you know, after wrestling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's. Um, I think I think it also helped that I did some karate. It gave a little bit. It wasn't too much like, like actual fighting that we did, <laughs> but it still gave that. Just because I did it for a while, it gave that nice little base. So when I started training MMA, clearly pretty much nothing worked that I learned, <laughs> but it, it wasn't completely, I didn't have to completely abandon it. I just needed to polish it and take things in consideration while sparring. Because before we just never sparred, we were just like hitting stuff. So hitting stuff alone like gives you a lot of repetition, even though you never used it. Mm -hmm. You still did a lot of repetition of it. So right now when we start sparring in MMA, it's like I made lots of mistakes. But once I considered things of like person moving and punching while moving over time, it's like, OK, I was able to use some of the things that I did back in karate. So so what was it like when you made that transition from wrestling to, to MMA like you're I mean, it sounds like maybe a lot of stuff didn't work for you, but you're still like an athletic guy, a wrestler. Like what, what was that like going into um, an MMA room for the first time? It was, it was definitely different because um, like slow twitch, fast twitch muscle, for example, in wrestling, it's okay to be stiff, stiffer, 
while I had to like, and I was a pretty big guy, like I loved lifting weights, so I had a lot of muscle on me. So all that muscle was just like in like slow twitch mode. It, I just, it, I really needed to like learn how to relax. Yeah, like because it's it's completely different. Like we can say like, sure, absolutely, wrestlers can punch, no big deal, but that that's still like how you really really need to re- relax. That's a long long process. So it took me a while to just like relax and move, and it was just going from relaxing and punching, and then to tighten up again and lifting people and trying to take them down so finding that middle was uh, what threw me off at first i was like wow this seems so easy but it's completely not so it was it was definitely a learning learning curve and um just different training I had my body had to become something that it was not used to so from watching a lot of your fights i mean yeah you come from a wrestling background but you also have really good hands how long did it take you to to really get comfortable on the feet, you know, throwing your hands and not just, you know, going for takedowns? So I feel like, you know, some wrestlers transitioning do have problems with that. Um, I think there were a few fights where it was easy to throw hands because I just set the pace. True. And the person wasn't firing back as much. I just went and... And I was just going. Uh, while in my last few fights, like I had to really watch it with Polizzi, with Jordan Young, they were throwing back, but I was still able to just be one step ahead of them. And it took me a while. It was a lot of hard work, a lot of hard, hard rounds, a lot of understanding that it's okay to be in front of the person. Am I comfortable now? No, in the video it looks like it is. <laughs> it does, but I'm like, it's still, it's still tough. It's definitely tough, but it was it was a long process. Definitely, absolutely, definitely took me a few years to like, okay, like I can stand in front of somebody like one step away instead of bouncing around in opposite corners and then taking five steps forward to actually needing to punch them. So. It was definitely a long process. I'm happy that I'm finally getting better and better at it. Same deal. I'm trying not to be happy with it. I'm trying to make it better. Um, it's definitely coming along. I'm happy. And it, like for, I watched my last two fights. So I was like, okay. It's, yeah, they look good. It's, it's coming yeah. along. But still, still got to learn how to deal with my nerves and just get extra comfortable with it. Right. So still have a long way to go, but it's um, I'll get there. <laughs> I, I I mean I think it's a pretty like regular learning curve. I mean you look at a guy like Kamaru Usman, like how long did it take him until he started being really comfortable with his with his hands, things like that? Um, I guess you started your career with so many finishes. And then with the decisions back to back, I'm sure you're like grateful for the time in the cage, but like is any part of you like anxious, like, oh, I need to finish the next guy because that's what you were used to? Um, yes and no, because I feel my last two guys were tough. Yeah. Really yeah. tough. And it's so hard to, it's just hard to finish people. Yeah. If, if the person is tough, they can in there and it's like you can try as hard as you want and you almost looked like in the fights where I finished people it looked like I was extra aggressive I would say that's not necessarily the case I think the person who I was fighting he was just he just made mistakes a little sooner and it made me look better while I was trying to find those mistakes on my last two guys but they just didn't give me any. They just, or if they True. do, they would bounce right back to it. And, and yeah, it was just tough. Like, even though I would hit him, hit him, hit him. And you, before I used to have a big problem. If I hit somebody, I'm like, okay, I just hit him. Now, if I just hit them really, 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 really hard again, the <laughs> fight will be over. And I'm like, oh, I hold my breath and I just start swinging. Right now, I kind of need to realize that, no, people are tough now. If I hit them, 
just keep hitting them the way you keep hitting. Don't get excited and don't just throw your energy away because that's how I'm going to make a mistake. That's how I'm going to get tired. That's how they're going to come back because these guys are not low level guys no more. No. They're smart and they realize that, okay, if this guy's getting too crazy, he's about to get too tired. And that used to be my problem. And I try to consider, okay, I just hit him a few times. It's okay. Just keep hitting. Just, just keep hitting. Uh, don't get too excited. Don't go bananas. And I guess so that leads us into to this coming Friday's fight, right? So you're taking on Gregory Millard at Bellator 257. And the big thing about this card is they have now kicked off the light heavyweight tournament. So, I mean, this this is a big spot for you guys on this card. Can you give us some quick thoughts on the fight? And then we will get into the actual light heavyweight tournament after. Uh, thoughts on my fight? Yeah, thoughts on your fight coming up. Um, it's interesting. I'm not sure what to expect. Um, I was supposed to fight um, the Swedish guy, Mark. Or I forgot his last name. Albrechtsen, some, something like that. Yes, Mark Albrechtsen, yes. Yeah, he's fighting also this weekend. We were supposed to fight in May. But I guess they needed like extra backups for the, the show extra 205 in case something happens. Um, so I thought I would still be fighting him, but they were like, no, we have a new opponent, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I did not know if Mark got hurt or something. But I saw today in this in the Zoom meeting his name. I'm like, oh, okay, he's here as well. Um, so I don't know what happened. But So yeah, uh, my opponent right now, it's interesting because by looking at his record, he's 12 and 6. So on paper i should beat him blah 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 but when you look at all his finishes it's they all finishes yeah like he he finishes people he he's a good striker um good ground and pound i guess that's what i saw in topology i couldn't really find too many videos of him and few other things like he hasn't fought in two years so now it's a question is he com- going to come in hungry with nothing to lose because he's fighting someone who's ranked number five right now? Or he's going to come in all rusty? So I have to think that to just get myself more ready, I have to think that he's going to come out all fired up, ready to go, trying to make a point. Because again, he has nothing to lose. He's fighting someone who's ranked number five. So... I think he's going to be more than ready. So I have to be on my A game, just like I was on my last two fights. Um, but again, he's a good striker. I'll try to strike again. I mean, just as much as in my last two. And we'll see what happens. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't want you to give away your strategy at all, obviously. But when I hear you describe a guy who's a striker, hasn't fought in two years and is going to be probably like kind of frantic to at least initially, I think, Oh, it's going to be super easy to like blast double leg this guy and put him on his butt and beat him up. Am I wrong in that? Again, I don't want you to like give away any sort of strategy here, but like that's my initial take on this fight. Uh, Strategy is simple. Keep standing. If it's going well, stay standing. If it's not going well, go to the ground. Um, And that's the thing. Like, I do have reach on him, and I do think I move better than him. While looking at his videos, he doesn't move too much at all. He just kind of stands there and fires his jab or kicks or overhands. So I feel maybe just my movement will get extra points on him. But again, like I just I can't expect anything. I always right. have to expect the worst. Sure. Um. Plus, he's a strong guy. I don't know how hard it's going to be to take him down. Um, we'll find out. And I always tend to give my opponents more credit. Always I give them more credit. I, I never understood why other fighters talk about their opponents like, oh, yeah, he sucks. He's this and that, blah, blah, blah. He's not good at this. I'm like, 
Wait, you 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 bragging that your po- that you picked someone who sucks, <laughs> right? Well, I, yeah, I get it. Like you bragging about somebody who you gonna like beat, like no. And at the same time, that's just a bad mindset because it's if something does go bad, it's gonna surprise you, mm-hmm. yes, and you might true. panic. But if I'm thinking like I'm gonna fight some crazy good person with perfect technique. I'll be on point. And most likely he does not have perfect technique and he's not strong like Brock Lesnar. So I'll be like, okay, this is a little bit better than I thought. So I'd rather have that experience than like, oh shit, I did not expect this. So yeah. are you a uh, are you a big tape study guy? Like before you fight, do you feel the need to watch all sorts of tape on your opponent, or is that something you more leave for your coaches and then you kind of bring it back to the table to drill afterwards? Uh, I give it first to my coaches. Um, they like, it's weird. I never trust myself. Gotcha. Like, look at the guy and I'm like, damn, he's good. And they're like, no, you're going to finish him in the first round. I'm like, what? How do you know this? <laughs> I'm like bad at looking, but they see them and they see me. I can't see myself as I train. So, um, and I lost my point there. Um, oh, yeah, the film. They watch it first. I kind of watch a little bit later, but I don't get too detailed into it. And we only try to, like, pick a few things because we only try to see, like, few things that people do consistently or, like, what they're good at. For example, Jordan Young fight. We knew the main thing is going to be he's going to be super relaxed and he's going to have good boxing, but his main thing is going to be relaxed and he's going to hope that I tire out. My last guy, we knew that, okay, striking is not bad, but I'll be able to deal with it. The only thing I'm going to have trouble with is wrestling. If I can sprawl, stuff the shot, then we just go back to fighting and the advantage looks like it's mine. So we just look for like few things and we just try to take them away because studying too deeply into it, it's not for the world title. It's yeah. not It's not someone who's best in the world. If someone is best in the world, they're best in the world for a reason because they do something specifically all the time in every fight. Well, most people at this stage, we're still learning, we're still changing. So whatever I see in my opponent's videos, I'm probably not going to see this time. But few consistent things that will happen, he just stands still and fires that jab. If you're a little bit further away, he fires those kicks. Wrestling, we couldn't see too much of it. Okay, so we just assume it's good. So we just we just know he's gonna fire that stiff jab and um, not move too much. He's like wait wait for you to come in, and he's gonna hit you. With try it. to so, fire off power. Yeah, yeah. So we're just aware of that that he's gonna s- swing that jab like hard and stiff. Um, and that's like one of the main things that he does consistent. So if we take away that, after that he just becomes like anyone else got you nice i like it um let's talk a little bit about this tournament this this like the the light heavyweight division in general because i know you said and we know you are number five in the the new bellator rankings um you got the champion fighting on the top of this card have you looked at the the light heavyweight grand prix bracket and if so do you have any thoughts like who's who are your favorites what fights are you looking forward to etc um, I guess if like if I would have to put my money on it, I would put it on a champion. Just because he beat Bader, he he beat Phil Davis, but those guys are tough. I do see Cor. I do see Cor Anderson winning as well, but. I see a little bit less of a chance. So I've, in my mind is, 
um, the champion Phil Davis or um, freaking Ryan Bader. So I feel it, it might be between those three guys. And between those three, it literally could be any one of them. Yeah. Just because they're so good. Again, it just takes one mistake. Maybe somebody had a bad day or injured from the last fight or something. Um, it could I, I could give it to any one of those three. But at the same time, I would not be surprised if um, um, Yoel pulls it off as well. That would be cool to see. But um, I think I would prefer somebody from Bellator to win it. It yeah. would look better for Bellator. Yeah, I mean, this this tournament is stacked, right? There's yeah. great names, you know, from, from number one guy to the number eight guy. And, you know, again, I think it's it's big for, for you to be on this card, right? Because if you make – you come in number five, right? You go out there, you have a great fight, you get your hand raised, and now it's like, you know, they got the light heavyweight tournament and boom, they're talking about you. Um, I just think it's a great opportunity. Uh, I'm sure obviously you're thinking that too. Any of these, obviously you don't want to look too far ahead – but uh, you know, maybe this is a question for afterwards. But you know, are you are you aiming to fight the winner of this tournament next fight, two fights down the line? It's almost like brings back to that when we talked about the legends. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I'm at with um. They they thought. I thought that they're going to put me in with one of the big names now. But Bellator said, like, let's give Julius one more fight in between. And it's understandable. I mean, my record is not huge, so it's... Plus, I don't have a big name. I understand the process of building someone up. Um, And at the same time, I don't want to go to someone's house and be like, hey, I run this now. I want to fight the champion. It's like... Whoa, hold your horses. Like, who are you? So, um, depends, because I'm sure the um, the winner of this whole tournament, that's what, like, in, in the fall? Yeah, I would I would say probably probably fall or, or maybe late, late year. I think they're going to try to get it done this year. Right. You know, so COVID kind of derailed the last tournament. Mm-hmm. But you know, hopefully they keep it keep it rolling. Yeah, so maybe I feel they might give me somebody who lost in the tournament, like one of the big names. Um, Le- Leoto Machida would be a great name. Everybody, and not everybody, but like <laughs> that's the, like the big name that everybody in my gym says, like Julius yeah. Machida. I'm like, what? Like in my mind, man, he's a legend. Like he's legend so much. It would be really, really cool. Like, no disrespect to that guy. But everyone says, like, yeah, you should you should call out Machida. And for some reason, that makes sense to everybody. Yeah. Now, oh, yeah, that's right. He lost. Because um, I was about to say, I don't, I don't want him to lose. But now, like, wait a minute. He <laughs> lost. Um, just now I remember that. So that is a big possibility now that we're talking about it. But again, I have to see how my fight goes after this yep. one. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll go from there. We'll, we'll see if Bellator wants me to do one more. If if I'm if they think I'm good to go, yeah, we'll go for my cheat. Everybody wants it, so <laughs> that's, I'll take it. It's weird. It's like whatever other people want to do. When my manager tells my coaches about my opponent, I don't even look it up. I ask my coaches. You think I can beat this guy? Yes. Okay, that's all I want to know. Sign on the dotted line. Before nice. I used to stress over it, I'm like, oh, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. Now it's like, Julius, you can beat this guy. I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> Love it. Love yeah. it. Um, looking at these rankings, and you've kind of been talking about this, but like, what did it? what was it like when you saw these rankings come out and you see your name, you know, up there with – Right, right next to Leota Machida and all, and Ryan Bader, champions and legends. I mean, you're four spots above freaking Melvin Manhoof. Like, what was that like when it's like, oh man, I am, I'm all the way here now. It was a big surprise. I thought it was the coolest thing ever mm-hmm. because when a, the tournament was coming out, 
well, at first they showed like the top eight people and they had a pictures and names and I was one of them. I was in the seventh spot. I was like, oh, cool. Okay. Then, then they signed uh, Yoel and Rumble. And I'm like, oh, they're probably going to be in the tournament. So I'm sure I was like knocked out of it. So I did not even expect myself being in the rankings because they got signed. So when I saw my name, I'm like, oh, snap, this is really cool. Like, even though I feel they probably would have been in it, it's nice that Bellator considers me as number five. Like, okay, like, they like me. They got their eyes on me. But I do think um, the whole ranking thing is going to change. Well, after every fight, it's going to change. Um, I'm sure this weekend it's going to change a lot. And once Yoel and Rumble fight, I'm sure they're going to be as well in a top 10. So, because they haven't fought. So I guess that's the reason why they were not in the rankings. Just because they haven't fought yet. Right. Uh, so I'm sure once they fight, they're going to be thrown in and the whole thing is going to be moved around. Do I go down? Mm, I don't care. Um, I'm I just, I like that Bellator considered me as number five and they got their eyes on me so i know they're gonna do me right with the whole thing and if they, if they drop me down a few points I, I still believe they got my back and we're just gonna work our way up to the better and better fights yeah i, I definitely think they got your back too i mean said it before they got you in a great spot on this card um to, to you know showcase you right you got that number five for your name, you keep winning. You're going to keep on on moving up. And again, you're fighting with guys. You know the champ, Dean Nemkov's on this card. Phil Davis. Um, yeah, I think they put you in a really, really good spot here. Um, before we get out of here, I guess we got like Ben. Ben brought up this good point. Uh, you are a uh, video game, video game guy. Is that true? A L- little bit. A little the, bit. A little bit. I. Um... I'm like old school game guy. Okay. I'm, in, I'm into recent. Well, last year I was like, you know what? I'm gonna download Counter Strike. The old Counter Strike's an old school game. Yeah, nice. Yeah, man. and people said like you should get that like the new one. I'm like, no, you gotta get the old school one. Like an old school one, right? Yeah, there you go. Then throughout the summer, I played that Diablo two. Yep, old school. Yeah, the, I knew the three was there, and like I think four is coming out soon. But I was like, no. Two, two, Diablo 2 was the game and I played a little bit of the um, um, Starcraft but I suck at the, at the regular mode where you just play against one one one, one and kids are just too fast right now I know right, they're, they're next level right <laughs> they're too much, it's like I haven't even built the first building they come out with a giant army from three different directions it's the thing man you can't be training for fights and trying to beat these young kids they're just no. sitting there playing games all day you know yeah so I just play a bunch of little funny modes and on it so yeah I definitely play I, def- I got my laptop um, nice. table so I'm gonna I'm play probably soon once we get off now that you brought it up <laughs> there we go. dude old school counter strike is like the hardest game ever like you gotta have the reflexes of a freaking robot right like i've only tried to play it a couple times but i just remember being like how does anybody do this this is impossible yeah and then and then like all the call of duties came out and that was that grew big but i don't know it's like i mean it's good but it's like the childhood memories it's like what you did when you were younger yeah and that was one of the games so it's and i still like was looking up i went on that steam website i believe it's called yep to just to look for all the games that I played when I was a little kid. And I was like, oh my God. And oh yeah, the uh, Heroes of Might and Magic too. Nice. Like, well, I was like, yeah, so I downloaded <laughs> that. I was playing. I feel like a giant nerd now. It got me all excited about video games. <laughs> <laughs> we had to ask. I'm a big video game guy myself, so I had, had to ask. Um, Julius, we really appreciate this. Uh, can you please... Tell everyone listening uh, where they can follow you, Instagram, Twitter, wherever you are online. Yeah, uh, Twitter, I suck at it. Um, too much typing. I like the pictures. So it's like, if I am you on Instagram, Twitter, not so much. 
Uh, yeah, just my first and last name, Julius Anglitskas, um, J-U-L-I-U-S-A-N-G-L-I-C-K-A-S. Um, yeah, please follow me. I try to, um, this whole fight, we could put a bunch of stories of just like what's happening throughout the day and just little behind the scenes stuff. So even if you don't click the follow, just click the story and see what's happening behind. And uh, yeah, thank you for the support. Of course, man. We wish you the uh, best of luck this weekend at the fights. Catch him live, Bellator 257, this Friday night. Julius, again, thank you, man, and good luck. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. No escape, get us back to this. Face the pain.